All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to TechGeek webinar series, our endeavor to empower techies. We believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skills and grow us as professionals. With this principle in mind, we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of various domains. The topic of today's session is Mobile Application Development, Native versus Hybrid. And our guest speaker today is Anup Ramachandra. He is the Product Manager, IBM Worklight Foundation with IBM Enterprise Mobile Platform. Anup has been working as Product Manager for Worklight Foundation from past eight months. Prior to that, he has worked over a decade on WebSphere application server as part of support development and technical leadership roles. He has done his MBA from Indian School of Business and BE in Computer Science. So without further delay, I introduce you all to our guest speaker. Over to you, Anoop. Hello Anup, are you able to hear me? Anup, your voice is not audible. Can you check your uh, audio setting at your end? We are facing a little technical issue with our speaker today. Please be online. We will sort it soon. Anu, can you please redial into the session if you are able to hear me? We're trying to reconnect with the speaker. Please be online. Hello. Come back. Uh, did yes, Anup Anup, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Yes, Anup. Uh, we lost you for some time, so please start with the ses uh, session. Okay. Okay. So you are able to hear me, right? Hello. This is loud and clear. Okay. Thank you. Yes, okay. Anup. Uh, your voice so is loud and clear. Yeah. Uh, I'll take over. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, uh, as introduced, uh, my name is Anup Ramachandra. I work as product manager for IBM Mobile First. So, I'll, I'll, uh, before starting, I'll just put, uh, put a perspective uh, and um, I would like to take a bit higher uh, viewpoint on um, you know, developing uh, mobile applications, native versus hybrid. I'll not go deep into uh, technical details of how do we really develop um, in, in native and hybrid because uh, you, you guys are developers and uh, you guys are like quite familiar with that. But what I what I'll try to do is I'll try to explain the whole paradigm 
and then uh, you know advantages, disadvantages, and well, what comes with uh, uh, you know what what benefits, and then probably let you guys decide uh, you know when the situation comes up uh, uh, on what kind of development uh, approach you want to take. So okay, let's get started. So today uh, we are going to discuss uh, majorly uh, the the mobile development approach, a native, hybrid, mixed hybrid, three things, and then uh, we are. I'm going to just briefly touch upon uh, uh, my platform, and that is mobile first platform. Let's get started. So when you take a first step, first steps into implementing this mobile development uh, strategy, when you want to decide on a strategy, you'll be facing an important decision that will uh, influence uh, the result of this development initiative. The process of choosing this development approach uh, for a mobile application. It may be native, uh, web, or hybrid. Uh, essentially, uh, you know, many parameters come into picture. It may be budget, the project time frame, uh, the target audience, uh, the application functionality. So each approach carries uh, inherent benefit, limitations, and uh, finding the the best that fits your organization uh, could be a challenging task. So the purpose of this presentation is not to identify like you know the best development approach. Uh, it doesn't exist. Uh, but to rather discuss the pros and cons. So, so mobile devices are different than web. Um, so portability, scalability, um, uh, mobility are, are of course the key differentiators. Uh, and also there is one 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 important element uh, uh, in, in mobile. So users are flocking to apps. Uh, in desktop they use web, but in but in mobile they they, they use apps. Uh, they are all sort of uh, you know data and interesting fact is in mobile apps. Mobile apps have overtaken PC internet usage. If you see the number of people uh, who are accessing internet, both on mobile as well as uh, PC, 55% uh, of them use internet uh, through mobile device. And from PC, it is 45%. Uh, this is in US, uh, but I am sure this is going to be replicated uh, all over. And more interestingly, out of 55% of the mobile devices uh, which access internet, um, apps made 47%. Of internet traffic, and eight percent of the traffic comes from mobile browsers. You know, you 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 use a mobile browsers to uh, access internet uh, is is very minimal. Just eight percent. Nobody wants to use browsers on on mobile phones. So apps are the key. So uh, why is that? Uh, probably, I mean, what we feel is because of the context. With the mobile, you get context using cameras, um, gyroscopes, GPS, NFCs. Accelerometers, you, you get a lot of information and that sets the context of the user. So with this, we get a lot of challenges as well. Uh, the real estate in the mobile is really small. Uh, you've got to develop what exactly customer really wants. Right? You might have uh, 10, 15 different features, but in, but in mobile, you really want to concentrate on that key particular feature which you want to, uh, uh, you know, the users to use. And also the timely manner because uh, they are not these relaxed the staff users. They want to get they want to get timely information. So uh, it also redefines your whole business model or what do you want to build, how do you want to build, all those stuff. Uh, you want to also worry about security because the device gets stolen and then uh, you know you have this intermittent signal, especially in India. So you want to uh, consider all these factors when you are developing your mobile applications. So along with that, uh, of course, we have this native versus hybrid stuff as well. Let's, let's get into that. Okay. So I will classify uh, mobile development approaches into three broad categories. One is a pure web, the, the second one is hybrid, the third one is a native app. So if you, if the so let, let's go into the pure web part first. So the application runs inside a browser of a mobile device. It might be a native browser or it might be a, a normal browser. So and uses the standard technologies like HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. Uh, to create this website. So uh, if your application uses the standard web technologies uh, and runs inside a, 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 a native browser or a normal browser, then that is a pure web. So what's the, what's the upside of this? Like you don't need to create a new application uh, for your new mobile platform or different mobile platform. It's, it's very quickly, I mean you can develop it quickly, uh, I mean you can use your existing uh, developers to do that, uh, but the downside is uh, performance is the issue. Uh, let's come to all these details later on um, uh, in depth. But to start with, performance is the issue. Uh, you cannot exploit native features like cameras, 
uh, local storage, your phone books, etc. So the second option uh, is uh, pure native. So with the pure native uh, development approach, you can create applications that are written in specific platform and run on only that particular platform. So you you use Java, you develop Android apps, you use Objective-C, develop iOS apps, uh, C Sharp, Windows apps. So you need to have a, a developers who know these languages. You need to have a, a, a lot of time to develop in three different platforms. So uh, it's very uh, time consuming and intensive, but it gives a good user experience as well as it gives lot of performance because this is bytecode, this is interacts with this operating systems directly, and then uh, the performance is much better than uh, your your web. So uh, hybrid. So hybrid tries to uh, utilize um, the best of both worlds. So you can create an application uh, that uses you know parts of both native and web development approach with standard such as HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS, as well as you can put native code uh, in between them. So for example, you can start with your uh, you know application with a native screen because that is a user experience uh, 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 you know kind of a primary uh, consideration. So you want a na uh, first screen should be a native screen, which is amazing. And then a so lot of uh, business logic when it comes later can be in HTML5 and JavaScript. So or otherwise you can have a single screen uh, which will mix both native and hybrid components. Like you know the top buttons and other stuff can be native and uh, the, the 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 data rendering part can be can be in hybrid. So your hybrid applications runs inside uh, a native container, uh, which will be provided by the platforms, uh, you know, Cordova or like uh, Worklight, and your mobile first platforms. So and then uses a browser engine to display the application interface. And also the native container allows your application to access device capabilities. So these capabilities can be leveraged from JavaScript uh, using Apache Cordova. So even uh, our mobile first platform um, uh, uses Cordova engine. Uh, to to interact with the with the native functionalities of the of the of the phone. So what are the benefits? So there are several benefits. You can you can access uh, your uh, you know native capabilities, cameras, contactless, etc. Also, you can ha have a enhanced performance where exactly you need user experience. Also, you can reuse the code and web development skills in your organization, but by, by using HTML5, JavaScript, CSS, wherever you can. So even in this hybrid approach, there are two kinds of uh, hybrid apps. So first is web hybrid. So uh, it's like you prepackage all your HTML stuff, you know, resources. And then uh, along with that, you create your, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, native application and then uh, you, you, you deploy it. Uh, so basically, uh, you, you, you access the device capabilities, but also you use other native platforms with the components such as libraries and user interface elements to enhance the mobile application. So you package the web resource along with the application itself. Uh, so the mixed hybrid. So here you mix the web and native elements uh, together. Either you have a hybrid app to which you add native user interface components and gestures, or you have mostly native app and add HTML screen. So you can have a same screen uh, with both native and HTML. So uh, basically it's mixed hybrid, which is completely mixed wherever you want to use. Uh, you can use either of them, or otherwise, Hybrid web, where you build a web app, uh, which which basically uh, you know has this HTML screens and everything and some amount of uh, native stuff, uh, which which uh, you know runs in the native shell. So uh, again, there are uh, you know different paradigm to this. Again, these things are really evolving uh, day by day, um, and then the future uh, looks much more flexible. Like you know, you really can use wherever you want hybrid and wherever you are, you can use native but these things are, are still evolving. Let's get into uh, some more details. So native applications. So native applications have, I mean, you know, binary executable files that are downloaded directly to the device and stored uh, locally. So this can be downloaded using, uh, you know, your uh, uh, app stores uh, for the every platform. Um, and then you know uh, you can just uh, visit them on Apple App Store or uh, BlackBerry World or otherwise Play Store, and you can download them. And once you initialize the native app interface, directly with the mobile operating system without any intermediary. We don't have this uh, uh, native browsers and all those uh, shells and etc. 
I direct interact with the operating system, super performance, amazing user experience. So the native app is freely, I mean, you know, it, it can freely use all those APIs that are made available by the OS vendor. Uh, and in case, you know, many cases it has unique look and feel of the typical uh, mobile OS, like, you know, Android uh, apps, you know, almost look, look like, you know, uh, the user interfaces and other stuff look like uh, the Android OS itself. So, so each mobile OS comes with, you know, own set of interfaces, components, buttons, menus, dialog, all those stuff. And uh, it's important to note that, you know, different mobile platforms carry unique palettes of UI components as well. So as a result, so, I mean, why I'm, why I'm explaining all these things is like, you know, if at all you are a mobile designer or you are a mobile, uh, you know, strategist, you want to launch an app across mobile platforms and you choose native, then you need to be really careful that, you know, all these, uh, uh, you know, palettes maybe or these dialog boxes are like specific to those uh, uh, platforms. So your designer needs to be familiar or otherwise your strategist needs to be familiar with all the UI components across the platform, you know, how, how it could look like in iOS, how it could look like in Android, so that when you're designing or when you are uh, developing, um, uh, you have consistent user experience across, the, uh, or otherwise at least, you know, the app should behave consistently. So uh, let's go a uh, bit detail uh, in terms of what are the tools available. So if you see these tools uh, as well as other utilities are normally called SDK of mobile OS. So although the development process is almost similar across different operating systems, the SDK is platform specific and each mobile OS comes with its own unique tools. Say it's like Xcode for iOS or Eclipse and Android Studio, Visual Studio for Windows. And then you have these languages, Object C, Object C, Java, C Sharp. So these differences uh, across platform, um, you know, result in one of the critical disadvantages that you know code written in one of the platforms cannot be used in other ones. So development and maintenance uh, of these apps, if you write in in you know in in multiple, um, if you want to uh, uh, go to the market with with multiple apps. This will be time consuming and it is, uh, it is uh, very, uh, you know, resource intensive. Uh, you need to get resources, especially in India, uh, if you are launching, uh, you know, an app, I mean, if you are developing an app for a vendor uh, in other countries like, say, Europe, where there is a lot of Windows penetration, uh, it's, it's, it's not easy to get, a, you know, a C Sharp developer. Or if you are launching in US, where you have a, a huge iOS penetration, then it's, it's not easy to get an iOS developer at least for I know. So, so when do you, when do you uh, go for native? So uh, basically, uh, if you, if you really have you know um, uh, a situation uh, where you want to launch uh, an app in, in 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 a single platform, say for example in India, you, you target Indian market and Android is fine because to start with you really don't see a lot of iOS users and you want to go for Android. So go for native because you have you can you know hire resources or you can have resources in a single platform. You can have amazing user experience and performance. So uh, you know native works fine. Um, or otherwise, you, you are launching uh, you know uh, for example uh, uh, an app which has which which really depends on key uh, uh, you know functionality of the device. Maybe maybe like Skype say for example. Um, you know it, it, it requires uh, you know uh, contact list. Or otherwise, if you're launching apps like, you know, uh, Whisper, Instagram, Tinder, like, you know, which, which depends on, uh, especially on, on taking photos, um, you know, uploading them quickly. So, uh, native makes sense. Uh, because, uh, you know, for me, if you ask me, uh, it's like, if you're building apps to create business, yeah, you know, native makes sense. But if businesses are building apps, uh, then it's another, other, uh, you know, um, discussion altogether because they have a core business and they want to be in all platforms. They want to launch it. Uh, they don't want to have huge maintenance costs and all those stuff. So uh, I believe it's a better approach. Uh, but if you if you really depend upon your app for business, uh, experience matters, performance matters, uh, and then uh, you know, native is, is 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 a good approach. And then, uh, of course, like you know, if you are launching games and applications that that require rich UI, of course, there's, there's you know it's a no-brainer to, to to start using native because the hybrid technologies have not yet evolved 
uh, to, to cater to a lot of uh, uh, you know these kind of uh, uh, capabilities. So they're still evolving. HTML5 is like really catching up, uh, but not at the uh, to get the kind of experience uh, we get in native. Okay. So let's go into um, uh, you know uh, web apps. So in this web app, so what we can do in web app um, uh, is basically uh, the two ways. One is your uh, m dot site, right? I mean, you launch your browser and you say like you know m dot dot com, and you get your uh, uh, you know uh, mobile website. So mobile websites uh, they are they are really uh, very tough to use because the form factors are are, are pretty pathetic. Uh, you know, uh, you won't be able to browse properly and uh, and uh, the user experience uh, is, is not so good, but you can just you know port all those um, um, uh, you know stuff into onto your web, and you don't need to worry much. Uh, but the second approach uh, for web, uh, uh, I mean web web approach, will be uh, mobile web apps. So mobile web apps are are very different. So what they do is uh, they have all these HTML, CSS, JavaScript uh, stuff, uh, which are similar to web web uh, applications. Uh, but they run inside, uh, you know, a native browser uh, of, of of the device. So it may be, um, you know, in case of uh, in case of Android, it may be WebView or iOS UI WebView. So basically, uh, you know, this uh, runs as a part of native browser, and also uh, it can be, uh, you know, uh, it can have, uh, uh, you know, a kind of a, a kind of a icon. Uh, on top of your, uh, you know, app uh, phone uh, in your home screen. So what happens is it is almost like similar to your native app. Uh, the user can just click on those, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, on the particular icon, and you can, you know, load uh, the new uh, version or otherwise the new updates of this app. So it's almost, uh, you know, as as easy as the M dot size, but it also looks like a, a you know a native app. Also, this can be distributed uh, using, uh, you know, web app stores, uh, not the uh, platform app stores. That there's a lot of web app stores out there. You can distribute with them, and then also, uh, you know, uh, you can uh, uh, you, you can make them easily searchable and all this stuff. So, uh, so when do you use this web approach? So basically, we saw uh, the native uh, when do you want to use it, but when when do you use this web approach? So. So a lot of companies, uh, you know, they want to distribute app internally. Say, for example, uh, I have a, 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 an IT organization, and I want my internal employees to use some apps. So I do not want to go through this, you know, curated app store and put there, put it, put, put in the, you know, the, the public app store, and then uh, where I, uh, iOS folks, Apple folks, uh, you know, review my app and all those stuff. I want, uh, you know, my own distribution capability. And then uh, I do not want, uh, you know, uh, to to keep on updating and providing, uh, pushing that to the app store, so it becomes very cumbersome. And then also I want to pilot this app, and I want to see, you know, uh, what's the what the penetration, what's the efficacy of this app, and then probably based on that I want to launch a, a native app. So, and then also you want to have the search engine results uh, kind of a situation. In, in some situation you want, you know, somebody to search in Google and you want to find them. So. This is a situation when you want to use uh, this pure web approach. You know, quick to market uh, is, is very important, and then you have this organization who wants to launch their own app. So these are the sort of situations uh, where, where I want to pilot something. Uh, then uh, you can you can start with this uh, pure web approach. Okay. Then we'll come to this hybrid app. Uh, so as I'm talking about um, um, you know about the about the hybrid apps, so what so it's, it's it's basically best of both worlds, right? I mean, your hybrid app uh, runs inside, um, uh, you know, a native container and uses that browser engine uh, to display the application interface. So the native container allows you uh, your application to access, you know, device capabilities. So these capabilities can be leveraged uh, from JavaScript using Apache Code, or whatever I was talking about. So basically, uh, you know, you, you can mix and match. You have this. Uh, you know, code or bridge to uh, interact with your uh, uh, with your native device, and then also you have this uh, you know native container uh, which uses this uh, native browser uh, to to 
to render all your HTML stuff. So again, uh, as I was talking about, this this field is like really evolving. Uh, we we uh, you know we are providing a lot of support. Uh, so how do you uh, really um, you know pass data between native and hybrid, and you and you authenticate uh, using native, and how can you uh, you know pass that authentication to hybrid uh, pages? Um, you know, and all those uh, kind of critical uh, support we just needed to have this mixed hybrid. Uh, so, so it, 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 there are a lot of support coming in. HTML5 evolving really fast. We have standards defined for HTML5 recently, and uh, uh, I mean, you know, some of the some of the uh, research organization tell tell that 50% of uh, of of uh, uh, you know of mobile applications are going to be uh, using HTML5 going forward. So, so this uh, hybrid apps can be, uh, you know, can be distributed uh, using public app stores. Um, I mean, platform app stores. Uh, you know, using the uh, um, Play Store or Apple um, app stores, etc. So, uh, so it, it exactly works like. I mean, you know, similarly behaves like a native, uh, and then it it it, it takes up uh, you know the performance uh, benefits and experience of native, and also uh, it helps, uh, you know, uh, to leverage your uh, 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 organization skills. Maybe you have your development skills who are like good in HTML5, web, web guys available, and I'll take them and, you know, use them to develop these, these features. So, but when do you use this? So, you have this in-house capability, you know, uh, web development skills, leverage skills to, you know, uh, you can leverage those skills, uh, start developing, and then, you know, um, cross-platform. I mean, Especially like countries like uh, Italy, where where or the way Germany, where you have this 15% uh, Windows uh, penetration, you need to have Windows as uh, the phone. It's, it's even higher than iOS in, in some countries. So of course you need to have iOS and Android. So you cannot just launch a, a particular app, um, you know, um, in just one platform, um, and then keep developing others. Or otherwise, you want to develop all three. It's, it's, it's seriously time-consuming. So in that case, you really want to go for uh, you know uh, hybrid. Because you are going to, you know, um, um, launching uh, and then go to market um, uh, speed uh, will be critical, right? And then also uh, you want to, uh, you know, I mean, you want to uh, keep keep an eye on the HTML5. It, it is it's definitely growing uh, uh, pretty fast, and then there are a lot of new platforms which are supporting and adopting HTML5. So, uh, so I mean, in hybrid you can leverage uh, this 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 technology which is in the upswing. So uh, this is the slide which just summarizes everything. I know native uh, like uh, graphics, uh, installation experience is, is pretty nice uh, and then you know you, you, you get uh, access to device specific features uh, but the, the development time is really high and then you know uh, upgrade facility like you keep upgrading then you need to go through app stores and then you need to push those upgrades to your users, the users have to accept that. So many times, you know, the upgrades uh, become so cumbersome, uh, non, most of the time, uh, most of the users don't use these upgraded apps. So, uh, uh, keeping up with the versions um, and then also keep delivering new updates uh, is a kind of a challenge. Um, and then also, if you go uh, to hybrid, yeah, it, it's all in medium in the sense like, you know, uh, the, the the access to to the native uh, capabilities are medium, and then you know um, even even the performance and experience is medium. So that's where you you balance your requirements. And web again are uh, quick, uh, easy to code, uh, but but the user experience is is, is on the lower end. So, and again, the distribution channel is completely different. So uh, what I was talking about was uh, uh, you know in case of hybrid, you have something called mobile web apps. So I'll just dwell a few minutes on mobile web apps. So mobile web apps, um, as I was talking, you know, um, uh, it's 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 like it can be uh, downloaded using uh, uh, you know um, mobile browsers. Like you you or otherwise you can provide a QR code. You just scan it and you can just you know users can get it. Or otherwise you open this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, you know app and then you can add it to the home screen. You get the icon on your home screen. It just acts like a native. Uh, and then you know no no app store fees and no app store stuff. Um, so so the upgrade flexibility is very high. You can keep upgrading uh, whenever you want. So when that uh, I mean you know so this is one of the uh, so app.fd.com. 
if you go to this app.com you can just say add to your home screen and you can get your icon on the, on, on the on the phone uh, for for FTE. So uh, it is just a mobile web app, completely HTML5, and it just behaves like a, a native, and uh, you can have complete control over that. Uh, but but this has no access to uh, this kind of app will not have any access to the mobile, uh, you know, the native capabilities basically. So when it compared to pure hybrid. Uh, 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 you know uh, where where I was talking about you know you can mix and match uh, native code and then you can add uh, you know uh, you know native in, in HTML page itself. So this has a hybrid apps, pure hybrid. So they need to be uh, you know um, downloaded only through app stores, and then also app store approval is required. Uh, for mobile web app, you don't need it. And then also uh, you know uh, this, this uh, needs to be uh, having this uh, you know direct updates and update needs to go through uh, app store and and the user have to agree for those uh, you know um, upgrade facility. So again, um, uh, this, this comes with uh, another advantage of you know uh, much better user experience and performance. So okay, so what our IBM Mobile First uh, you know platform does is uh, it covers uh, all the options. So when you are uh, uh, developing uh, applications uh, using IBM Mobile First uh, platform, uh, you can you can use uh, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, um, and then you can you can develop uh, you know mobile web app or otherwise uh, you know an hybrid app or otherwise a native app. So you can you, so the flexibility is with the, with, the, with the developers basically. Um, and then uh, you know you can use um, uh, JavaScript libraries. You, you you may want to use jQuery. You may want to use uh, Dojo. Uh, you can integrate uh, uh, all these uh, you know JavaScript uh, libraries, and you can build your uh, um, uh, business logic. And you can use HTML5 libraries, and you can business, uh, build your front end. And also you can use your your, your native code the, the way you want. Uh, so so what we believe. Uh, for IBM Mobile First platform is uh, the developers need to define uh, um, or otherwise uh, the, the the mobile strategy team has to decide based on the requirement what is the best approach. Uh, you know, just as we discussed in this whole uh, uh, presentation, uh, there are there are a lot of uh, trade-offs. So let me just spend few uh, few minutes on what what we offer. Uh, so basically, uh, IBM Mobile First uh, platform. Previously, it was called Worklight. I think some of you might have already heard about Worklight. So we have uh, renamed it to Mobile First uh, platform. So the first part, uh, we provide a studio. So this is a, a Eclipse based studio. You need to download, uh, you know, Worklight or Mobile First plugins. And once you, um, uh, you know, download these plugins, uh, you'll be able to develop. Uh, you know uh, applications of for mobile first or work light. So, uh, so you have the capability as I was talking about to build native um, um, or otherwise you can build uh, um, um, you know hybrid apps or you can, or you can build uh, you know um, completely the apps. So we provide uh, SDK uh, from our mobile first for all the, uh, all the platforms, most of the platforms including Windows 8, Windows Phone 8, uh, Blackberry, iOS, Android. And and then uh, we have extensive, uh, uh, you know. So we use Cordova um, uh, internally, uh, but we have provided extensive uh, capabilities uh, on top of it, uh, uh, you know, using uh, JavaScript uh, or Cordova plugins uh, to interact uh, with the server side. So what is different fr uh, from mobile first is we we have a very robust server side capability, and we have all the APIs to to interact with the server side. So, so along with that, in the studio, uh, you also have uh, simulators uh, which you can, uh, you know, use uh, what you what you see, what you get editors, and then you can use runtime skins, define skins, uh, load runtime skins, and then also uh, you you have the by test workbench. You can you can create uh, test cases and you can run test cases on multiple devices. So that's uh, for the studio side. So when you come into uh, the server side. So we have something called uh, you know mobile first uh, uh, server, uh, previously called Worklight server. So Worklight server runs on top of uh, uh, you know any app server, Comcat or otherwise uh, application server, Sphere application server, or any other application server, and then it provides 
capabilities uh, for security to connecting to the back end because we provide uh, a lot of ready adapters as well as an adapter framework to create your own adapter okay so uh, you can you can uh, you know create adapter and connect it to the back end and then we provide a unified uh, push notifications so that you can uh, you know uh, push notifications from the server side uh, to the to the apps and then also we provide robust analytics uh, you know operational analytics um, and then also uh, we provide uh, you know uh, JSON store and then offer offline access and then sync it with with the with the database when once uh, the the mobile uh, becomes uh, comes online. So also along with that, we provide an operational console. So we have a console for uh, deploying these uh, uh, apps, server side components of the apps, and then also you can manage uh, the uh, these apps, like you know versions of the app. You can enforce versions. If, for example, you want uh, users to download 1.1, then in that case you you want to enforce that. Uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, push notification console. You want to understand who all subscribed. You can you can tag. I mean, you can uh, uh, segment the users based on their interests, and then you can just push notifications to those users. Um, and then also, you can have event-based notifications. Say, for example, if somebody has subscribed for a particular event uh, using uh, uh, you know uh, using an adapter, you can push notification. You can list uh, you know uh, get that particular event. I mean, you know, once the event happens. Um, uh, you 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 uh, use that after and push that notification to the particular users who are interested, and then also uh, 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 you have a lot of security features. Say for example, uh, if there is any uh, enterprises which are using this particular uh, uh, platform or applications, then you want to make sure that uh, you know uh, those applications are not in the hands of wrong wrong employee. I mean, say for example, you you lost. A phone, and you 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 just report that my my view ID phone is lost. You know, uh, in that case, you can remotely disable those particular applications which you feel is uh, you know are critical. Uh, so the, so the particular guy who has uh, got those uh, got that particular particular phone um, uh, need not access you know cannot access this application. And also uh, you know security is a, is, a, is a big issue. Of course, uh, we provide a lot of security uh, features uh, for avoid uh, avoiding uh, you know phishing and then to see. Uh, if there are no transactional, uh, uh, you know, hacks, and then um, also, you know, your content is not copied and uh, all those stuff. So security is key, and this is specifically for uh, uh, for enterprises. And also, we we give something called application center. Again, this is for enterprises if they want to create their own custom, uh, you know, app store. Say, for example, I want to have, uh, uh, you know, say Coca-Cola App Store. Right? You go to Coca-Cola App Store and you get all the apps for Coca-Cola. So, a Coca-Cola employee wanted to wants to just, you know, download all Coca-Cola employees. A marketing guy wants to download your app, and then financial guy wants to download your app. So, you have this uh, Coca-Cola App Store, uh, which we provide. Uh, I mean, which can be just customized for Coca-Cola, and then they can just use their app center to 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 to, to they just put their own apps into that. So, basically, we 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 feel, you know, there are four parts to this. Uh, one is how how do we accelerate development? So you are an organization, or you are building an app for an organization, or you are a startup uh, like a developer who wants to develop. How do we um, accelerate development? Maybe provide a lot of uh, so we provide a lot of infrastructure uh, to 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 develop quickly, uh, test quickly, and deploy quickly, um, uh, and then go go uh, go live. Uh, you know, um, with, with, with all the amazing user experiences and uh, uh, and performance. So that's what we try to do on on the development side. On the security side, we really want uh, you know uh, the applications uh, content to be secure, um, the transactions to be secure, and also the device app itself to be secure. So so we try to uh, you know concentrate on all these three areas. And then also user engagement. Uh, I mean, you you build an app, and then if nobody Nobody engages with that. They, they might download it, but if they, if they are not engaging with that, the the, the use time uh, on this app are very minimal. Then then it doesn't uh, help your mobile strategy. So uh, we provide a lot of geolocation capabilities. You will be able to understand the location. Uh, you need to be, you, you you can you know you can uh, uh, define geofences and you can define triggers. Based on that, you can push notifications. Um, and then, as I was talking about, you can you can target a particular segment of customers in, in notifications. So engagement uh, is key, and location and push notifications are the two major pillars 
uh, we concentrate on. So you can use our geolocation APIs. Again, these are all cross platforms, and you develop once, you can deploy it on any any platform. And then mobile operations, as I was talking about scalability, you know, we can cluster all these servers on the server side, and uh, uh, you know, you can achieve amazing scalability. Um, I mean, you know, you, you can go to uh, uh, millions of you know, thousands of concurrent users, and then uh, you can you can also you you can you know validate all these things using operational analytics, understand what's the round trip time between your adapter backend uh, uh, to your middleware or middleware to front end, or otherwise how many iOS users are using, how many current active sessions are available, how many of them are Android iOS. So all those operational information you want. Um, and uh, 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 on your console so that you 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 have your mobile strategy uh, uh, on track. So these are the four pillars uh, we concentrate on. And then let me just uh, you know briefly uh, go through uh, you know a few of the features which which I already gone through. Uh, then I'll start taking a few of the questions. Um, so uh, as I was talking about you know these are cross platform application runtime. So you develop all these features on the on the, on the server side. And these are available uh, for for all the platforms, say uh, you know Windows client, or otherwise for iOS client, or otherwise for uh, um, um, you know Android client. So push notifications. I'm talking about like you know this is a unified push notification. Uh, you have a single API. You say uh, you know walk like or push. Uh, we interact with the APNS and GCMs and WNS and MPNS of the world, and then we make sure that you know uh, the push notification is sent to the to the okay. right devices. Um, and then also you have uh, you know um, REST API support for all these uh, features. Um, and then also uh, you know uh, as I was talking about, you can, you can easily target each, every user. You know, uh, if you feel that you want to target X Y Z device, you can target X Y Z device and push notification, and and then push a notification. And also you can just broadcast to everybody, and then you have some push analytics as well. You know, you want to understand how push has been behaving, and then uh, you know. Client side uh, data and then you know business intelligence, how how things are uh, working out for you. So that that is what analytics uh, capture. And then encrypted storage, you know, offline. Uh, as I was talking about, you the the, the mobile comes up with a, comes up with a very challenging situation where there not be a a, a signal or a, or a, a, you know connectivity uh, in, in many of the times. So you want to have this local encrypted storage which stores the JSON data. Uh, and can be accessed offline, uh, and then you know once the user makes those changes and he comes online, you'll be able to send those uh, uh, information to the backend. So also you want to encrypt this information so that you know it's, it's secure. So we provide JSON store uh, capability um, to do this, and uh, app security. So app security uh, is very key. I mean, you want uh, the only the you know uh, the registered or, or authentic users to use your application. And then also you want uh, you know adapters, and then also connectivity with your LDAP server XYZ to have uh, you know a secure connectivity going, and also this integration should be smooth. Uh, as I was talking about, not just the application security, you need to worry about the content security and network security, transaction security as well, uh, because mobile mobile uh, uh, transactions. Uh, are all almost similar to web transactions, uh, but also the content may not be because you know uh, the the phone might be stolen, the phone might be in wrong hand. So you need to identify that, and you want to take actions based on that. Also, uh, you know, uh, as I was talking about, if that is the case, you, you want to I know remotely disable some of the applications, and, or or otherwise, you know, why, why only dis uh, you know disable remote uh, whole applications? You want to disable some of the some of the you know transactions. Say for example, you feel that a particular uh, phone has malware, or otherwise a particular phone is jailbroken, then you don't want a particular banking app to transfer more than say 5k because like you know you feel that this this could compromise the transaction, and then uh, this, this 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 phone could be compromised. So so basically uh, you can do all these uh, uh, you know uh, kind of new use cases to make sure your transactions uh, and your app users uh, are secure. And also, one one of the major uh, you know challenges is how do you make sure um, the applications are up to date? You know, so so also specifically coming to you know hybrid applications because uh, most of the time you you create all these uh, HTML artifacts and you want to push them directly. So we have uh, you know features uh, capabilities which you can use 
to directly update an application, not going through your, of course, your uh, you know curated app store. But if you create a, a, you know a, um, um, an HTML change, then you can directly update uh, your app, uh, you know, um, uh, through 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 our platform. So so these are the basic uh, you know capabilities. Of course, um, uh, you know uh, we have capabilities to integrate with your uh, backend and everything. So apart from that, um, you know, these are the basic capabilities uh, for the mobile-first platform. So with that, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'll just uh, summarize. Uh, you know, we just uh, went through uh, uh, a paradigm of uh, mobile development approaches, and then we ended with uh, mobile-first platform and what it uh, what it uh, provides. So with that, uh, I can take a few questions, and then um, you know, uh, if at all some of the questions which I cannot take or if you say cannot answer. I promise I'll, I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for this insightful information, Anoop. I request yes. you to take up the questions now, as you have just mentioned. I request you to read aloud the questions and their answers so that all our users may listen to your insight. Okay. So uh, I'll just uh, uh, go by, okay, uh, I see a particular question from individual, which mobile database is being supported as far with hybrid? So uh, basically you can use, uh, uh, you know, uh, NoSQL databases or otherwise any other uh, database as well. Um, there is no, uh, as far as I understand, uh, limitations with, with hybrid. So for example, with ID Mobile First, uh, we provide, uh, you know, support to, uh, Oracle 12C and then Oracle 11G and SQL Server, uh, what not MySQL and then uh, NoSQL databases like Cloud and MongoDB. So uh, I think you, you are safe in that uh, extent. So that is from Amir Khan. So uh, the second question uh, I would say I'll take is: uh, Is there any testing framework available with the IBM Worklet? Oh, yeah. So uh, we have a testing framework called uh, Mobile Test Workbench. So that comes free with the worklight. So if you have worklight, so uh, you will be you, you will have access to that. So what you need to do is you need to uh, download that to Eclipse, uh, install it in Eclipse, and you can create uh, you know um, um, the 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 test cases on a particular device, um, and then uh, you should be you will be able to uh, you know uh, modify them. You should be able to edit them for uh, you know. All the other devices, and you can you can run on on on, on all the other devices. So it, it supports uh, uh, you know native. I mean, it supports uh, Android and iOS as of now, and not on Windows. And also, uh, it supports both native and hybrid. So uh, what is not covered in the mobile test workbench is performance testing. So that is available in rational test workbench, uh, which is one of the upgrades on top of it. But I would say you know mobile test workbench with IBM Worklight. Uh, is, is a very good start for testing. So, and then uh, if you if you want to, you know, test along with the development. So we have a, a, a browser-based simulator. Okay. So that is the part of development. If you want to test and you want to see uh, how how my app looks and how how my you know form factors looks. So in that case, then we have something called uh, you know uh, browser simulator, uh, which uh, you know um, which you can uh, which you can use. So basically, um, uh, you know, and then you have all the devices and form factors. You can just select uh, iPad, uh, blah blah blah, Android, this device, and you'll be able to simulate your app, uh, maybe in 15, 16 devices, and you know, different platforms, and then you can use that. So uh, that is another question. So how how can I secure my local data if mobile is stolen? So okay. So um, there are a couple of uh, ways you can you can do that. So the first one is uh, you know always what, what what we have is something called a JSON store uh, local data which can be encrypted. So basically you store your uh, you know app data uh, in, in in this uh, JSON store and you can encrypt them so that even if if, if the mobile is stolen you you will not expose that information. And uh, and as I was talking about there are a couple of other ways. Uh, of uh, ensuring uh, you don't lose uh, is uh, you know uh, this this you know through console 
you can disable the app being accessed through control you can you can hold disable uh, most of the apps uh, you know uh, which are developed say for example you are developed uh, using IBM worklight then IBM worklight will provide a console to disable all the apps but if you want to completely uh, you know uh, take control the whole mobile device itself then there is there's another solution uh, which is called uh, mobile device management MDM solutions what they do is uh, they completely disable the whole phone so that you know you don't even uh, need you cannot even uh, uh, you know uh, access the phone. Uh, but but they are like majorly for this uh, bring your own devices for enterprises where where uh, you know if the device is stolen they want to just you know wipe out all the data from the phone and completely deny access. Okay, so yeah. Uh, so there is one more question. Uh, I mean, I'm getting a lot of questions, so I'll try to answer uh, um, uh, any uh, you know uh, as many I can. But I, I promise I'll, I'll get back on few. A hybrid is emerging in market. Is there any threat for for native mobile developers? Okay. <laughs> so uh, I do not think so. I mean, uh, what has happened here is uh, uh, the up the approaches uh, we take uh, is mixed. I mean, you you need native developers. Native uh, is is is. I mean, what we are seeing from our customers. I mean, we have a, a, a lot of enterprise customers all over the world, thousands. So I keep interacting. What they, what they, what I see is uh, hybrid is good, but native is coming back. You know, in the sense like we want to really want to have native components uh, in many of the places, right? I mean, they just don't want to have it right? because it, it doesn't help. Uh, the first uh, thought was we want an app. Okay, uh, we went uh, hybrid, fine. But the second thought is like, okay, now I want my customers to be happy. So I want native stuff everywhere. So it's not going anywhere. So we have all these, I you know, combinations. So uh, uh, if an organization has an existing website on a server, what needs to be done to start developing a mobile app using the, this platform? Does the existing website code needs to be changed, adapted? Okay. What I would say here is it needs to be adapted. Uh, you know, we cannot just directly take everything. There, there needs to be some some adapt uh, you know uh, adaptation needs to be done. That's where our platform and other probably you know phone gap everything comes into picture where you can um, you can take that code and you can you know change for the form factors and then uh, you know assimilate and see uh, if if if, if uh, the user experience is good. Then you can create a web app out of it and you can start you know as I was talking about uh, start shipping to uh, you know, the app stores to just minimally start it. Okay, how I be? Uh, can I block app by device ID? Yeah, uh, if you, you can block an app using a device ID, definitely. How uh, IBM Worklight meets multiple device support? Okay, so Worklight uses Cordova uh, as as a, as a, uh, as an engine, but it's much much more than Cordova uh, because. Um, you know, we have built in a lot of uh, you know support uh, to interact uh, with with your uh, native device. Along with that, we have huge server side uh, you know capability. So we use Cordova. Uh, we use we we build a huge lot of plugins around Cordova to have enhanced capability for application uh, to have this cross platform. Uh, in internally, Cordova interacts with uh, the native uh, you know native operating system. So that's how we do. Um, but it's much more than that uh, because we have a huge server side support. So, uh, okay, about hybrid apps, uh, uh, they also require the knowledge of native. So, do you need to know both background, native as well as web? So, I would say if at all you are a mobile strategist or a mobile, uh, you know, architect, yes, you have to uh, because you need to see where you want to put native and where you want to put hybrid and and why for that matter you know which one uh, requires native which one requires hybrid so uh, but you are a developer then I, I, I would say no uh, to a certain extent uh, but as I was talking about you know things are evolving and uh, 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 you know with this mixed hi hybrid approach uh, I think sometimes you want a native code to transfer data to hybrid authenticate so in that case, you might need to uh, learn a bit, you know, either way.
Okay, I would not uh, take uh, any, uh, you know, if there IBM designed any apps for iOS and what opportunity for iOS native app development in IBM. Okay, so uh, IBM had a deal with uh, uh, Apple uh, where uh, we are developing, uh, you know, uh, around 100 uh, enterprise apps on iOS. So we are, we are doing some work on that front. Okay, what are the exact device specific features? We can't access some hybrid app, but we can access some native. I mean, uh, as I was talking about, in, with, with hybrid we can access uh, all the device capabilities through, through code of a plugin. But the only thing uh, here is, uh, the performance and the experience will not be as great as the, the native. So that's the difference. And then which portion of, uh, of the service running on the developer machine and which portions are running on IBM side. I, I do not understand this question. So somebody is asking about licensing for uh, mobile first. So uh, there are two parts. Okay, uh, I just need to spend a few seconds on this. Uh, we have uh, 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 an on-premise solution as well as a, mobile, uh, a cloud solution. So in cloud, we have uh, what do you call as Bluemix. So if you go to www.bluemix.net, we have mobile services uh, where we provide services which is pay as you go. And on premise, uh, we have a licensing model uh, which which is generally for enterprise. So. so probably I'll I'll stop at this point. Maybe I, I don't know if I answered all the questions, but uh, I'll try to get back with some of the questions we are not answered. Uh, uh, and uh, I would like to thank everyone uh, for attending my webinar and asking these uh, good questions. And then hope I was helpful to you guys. Over to you. And I'm really thankful to our guest speaker today for conducting this wonderful webinar with us. It was indeed a great session. I would also like to thank all our participants for their support in making this webinar a success. The recording of the webinar will be available on techgig.com as soon as possible. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you Anouk for taking time out and having us. I hope you have a great evening ahead. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.